the Silent Hill 2 remake. Is it too emotional? That's the concern I've seen floating about on social media and YouTube. There's been plenty of reaction and discussion videos about it already. James, a famously disassociated man who shoved his hand in a dirty toilet, is shown having feelings in the remake trailer. And it doesn't fit. It feels wrong. I've seen many folks, even those with an open mind about the remake, concerned about this change. But is it a change? And if it is, how so? When I thought about the idea James was more emotional, I began to wonder why it felt that way and what it might mean about the Silent Hill 2 remake. And I came to an interesting conclusion that revealed something to me about the original game I'd not much considered. In fact, Remake reveals a weakness in the original game that's likely a product of its time, and an opening Remake could take to stand on its own right, and present an old story in a new, unique way. So, is James more emotional? To understand the question, we have to discuss the source material, and what the trailer presents us with, the cutscenes that make James look emotional, and the original game material those scenes draw upon. Silent Hill 2 has about 85 different cutscenes. Only a fraction of those are full CGI cutscenes. These include the introduction in the bathroom, Angela in the graveyard, Eddie in the bathroom, Maria by the lakeside, Angela in the mirror room, Maria in the hospital basement, Eddie in the prison, and Maria in the labyrinth. There are also a handful of other scenes that appear in CGI in the trailer that don't actually appear in the game. What you notice once you consider the actual content of the scenes is that James is not featured or central to most of them. The handful of CG scenes we get tend to be character introductions, and scenes central to the personality of a character. Angela's first appearance in the graveyard, which does include James in a short handful of shots, mostly focuses upon her movements and conversation. Later, in the mirror room, we again focus heavily on her body and her face, with James in the background. Maria's introduction is the same way. We have a very short image of James's reaction to seeing her, before she slowly turns around and speaks. Almost all of these scenes have in common a focus upon a secondary character, and very brief scenes of James reacting to them. Most of James's central scenes, beyond his introduction, are in-game cutscenes. These are story scenes that aren't in full computer graphics, and when you compare them to the CG scenes, it immediately becomes apparent how limited they are. Most of the in-game scenes are set at a distance from the characters. They are often shown in full body, usually with two or three characters on screen at a time. Compared to Silent Hill 3, where it wasn't uncommon for the camera to focus in on a character's face during conversation to show detailed expressions. Silent Hill 2 is almost entirely missing this. Save a handful of scenes, like Angela in the staircase, most of the game's scenes do not reveal much of the face. To really get how this affects the player's experience with the scenes, let's identify the scenes that appear in the remake trailer and analyze their original versions. There's the mirror scene, clearly, which shows some extra details the original game leaves out. One thing to consider is trailers often include details the game won't. Silent Hill 2's trailer, after all, included CG scenes that never appear in the game. Sometimes there are more details you want to use to tease players beforehand that don't actually fit the game itself. I think it's entirely possible the bathroom scene elongation was part of trailer development. I could be wrong. I just put the idea out there because I know a lot of folks probably have feelings about this scene being longer. I kinda get it. James's face appearing from nothing is a stellar scene. We'll see if the remake opens the same way or not. But back to comparing scenes. After the bathroom, we see him walking in various locations in a way that mimics the early entry into town. He's following a monster and walking along foggy streets before coming to an intersection very much like the intro in the original. The next scene is James in the apartments, turning to see a monster and a very brief appearance of Pyramid Head. I think this is also possibly a fabrication for the trailer. 
because it seems so weird Pyramid Head would just appear in a room James is already in, but who knows? This is clearly related to Pyramid Head's first appearance. After, we see Laura outside the hospital, and James reaching for the key in the apartments. Then, James is walking into an area, probably the hospital. Then, James hiding in a closet. James with the noose. Some combat in the hospital. Then, James running into an elevator. James collapsing and screaming. And then, James entering a gazebo by a lake where Maria is. I mostly want to focus on three scenes. James entering the elevator. James with the noose. And James collapsing. These three scenes obviously show a more emotional James, and they are also clearly connected to specific scenes from the original game. The scene in the elevator is the scene in the hospital basement. James and Maria are running down the hallway during gameplay while Pyramid Head follows. Once the player makes it to the end of the hallway, a scene begins. We see James dart inside the elevator, turning to reach for Maria once he realizes she's fallen behind. He's trying to pull open the doors, but can't. And Pyramid Head comes and murders Maria while he watches. All we can see is her hand fall limp before the doors finally shut. James collapses and music plays. Once you really look at this scene, it's a little weird. This is an emotional and powerful moment. A terrible monster that's followed us for some time has now murdered someone before our eyes. A person who resembles the protagonist's wife, but we don't see the murder. We don't see the murderer. We don't even see the face of the man watching. All we can see is the back of James's head and a hand. The hallway was apparently difficult for the game developers. Ito Masahiro mentions that originally, Pyramid Head's weapon was going to change once James entered the labyrinth, changing from a sword to a spear. Then they realized the sword didn't work in this specific hallway. They had to have Pyramid Head hold a spear to navigate the halls. That brings to mind a limitation with this area in particular. It's hard to navigate. It's restricted and closed in, while three characters are moving and reacting within it. What camera angle could the team have possibly used? They had to hide Pyramid Head's weapon because they weren't able to realistically animate a spear entering a human body. They can't show Maria's lower body or much of Pyramid Head. That cuts off almost all the interesting angles. We can't see Maria's face as she dies. We can't see much of Pyramid Head as he attacks. We can't see James's reaction. All because the setting and the graphical limitations mean there's too much they have to hide. So this pivotal moment the first canonical death in the game is seen from behind James's head. What expression was James making here? What kind of heartbreak was he feeling? We only see him moments later after he's retreated inside himself and collapsed to the floor, and we still can't see his expression closely. James is distant to us emotionally because he is literally distant to us physically. It's hard for the artist to navigate the limits of the art and the engine while also conveying how James feels. The face we see James display in the remake trailer could entirely be true to how James feels in the original. We just never saw it. The next scene to consider is the new scene. It, like the hospital scene, is an in-game cutscene, not a CG scene. That means facial expressions are limited. When it comes to faces in Silent Hill 2, it has to be remembered they were all done entirely by hand. The use of motion capture at the time was very new, and Silent Hill 2 did more mocap than perhaps many studios at the time, but facial capture was very limited. The artists couldn't rely upon mocap for facial expressions the way they could for body movements, so the CG team made every facial expression by hand, a process that was probably most of their work, I would imagine. On the other hand, it seems likely the in-game cutscene team was focused more on editing body movements than they were the face. And what facial movements they made were related to turning the head, moving the lips, and possibly the eyes. Once you remember this limitation, so many of the game's problems become clear. Silent Hill 3 and 4 would cut out all CG to focus in on in-game scenes, and they would use motion capture, and would record said material at least two years later than Silent Hill 2's material. The technology seems to have vastly improved, and the ability to focus on in-game scenes rather than dividing the movie team in two 
means that all the scenes were able to have better expressions and better faces. It's far more powerful for it. While I love the CG of Silent Hill 1 and 2, it's clear that choosing to cut CG gave Silent Hill 3 and 4 the chance to make every single scene hit with incredible power. Silent Hill 2's in-game scenes don't all hit that same way. In Silent Hill 2, the more you look at the in-game cutscenes, the more you realize faces barely move, and they are rarely the focus of the scene. Usually it's the full body, and the head itself and the eyes may move, and the mouth will talk, but compared to the details of the cinematics or later Silent Hill games, it's minimal. It's almost nothing. The in-game scenes have so little facial expressions, save for major exceptions. The Angela staircase scene is the one that really seems to have been a focus, with a lot more facial expression and detail. Remember, without facial mocap, the team would have had to do it all from scratch for every expression. It's no wonder they focused elsewhere. James in the original new scene does not move his face at all. There's nothing. I watched the scene on loop, and it's as if his face is frozen. It's uncanny. The focus, of course, is the head, moving into the range of the noose, giving the feeling James might be about to hang himself, a terrible foreshadowing of things that may come. A facial expression would be added detail, and added work, that just wasn't necessary for a team that had to create every facial expression from scratch. That's no longer the case in the modern day. The expression on James's face looks comical here, because we're all comparing it to the deadened stare of the original in our heads, and it looks wildly different. And that's almost certainly because this is an actual human face, motion captured and edited to appear as James, and the real human expression is miles apart from the empty nothingness of the original. Let's look at the third scene. There's only one scene in the game that sees James falling to his knees, Maria's third death in the Lakeview Hotel. He screams at Pyramid Head to leave her alone, in one of his most emotional moments, before falling to his knees. Look at how we see him in early portions of this scene. Once again, Maria is dying, and our viewpoint is from behind James's head to start, and then from a distance above. We never see close up on his face. This is another likely difficult scene to frame, because it involves four moving parts, a murder attempt they can't directly show, and two levels, the main floor and upper floor. The camera jumps around and only shows one face, Maria's, as she stabbed for just an instant. James is always at a distance. Then he falls to his knees, has his speech about Pyramid Head as the camera zooms out, and then a battle begins. So of course, this scene in the remake feels drastically different. Honestly, this is the moment that sold me on a remake. A moment so important to the game that was so limited in the original, now giving a new viewpoint and more access to James's feelings. Think about it, not a single one of Maria's deaths in the original game is given CG treatment. None of them are seen closely or in detail. We never get to see James's face as he watches his wife die. Consider the game's endings. James and Mary's reunion is watched at a distance. We watch James tell his wife his feelings from behind his head. We don't see his face. I try to imagine another game from this same year presenting the story in a similar way. Say Final Fantasy X, one of my favorites, which just had an anniversary, and I can't imagine the game's most powerful scenes without imagining the main character's faces, expressions, and feelings most of which were in CG, because Square is the king of CG and had all the money to throw at the game. Konami and Silent Hill unfortunately didn't. They spent a lot of money on Silent Hill 2, so much it was considered a financial failure, but they still couldn't make every single major scene in the game CG. The CG team was about five people. Final Fantasy X had an entire movie division with over 30 CG designers. It's no wonder many of Silent Hill 2's most powerful, important scenes just couldn't be shown in close emotional detail. But that's not to say the game's scenes are all weak. What I love about a good remake is how it talks to us about the original game, how it shows us the strengths and weaknesses of the original. A weakness is the fact that we don't see faces much. A strength is how Silent Hill 2's team clearly knew this weakness existed and how they thus implemented many subtle, powerful ways of conveying emotion visually. 
In in-game cutscenes, the camera often tells you a lot about how the character is feeling. When Angela is facing the monster that represents her father, she is seen from behind. Again, very little facial expressions in this scene. After she drops a TV on the monster, the scene stills for a moment. She stands still while the camera shifts in a way that creates an angle, as if she is imbalanced. The camera angle mimics her emotional landscape. She is imbalanced emotionally, and so is the scene. In an opposite scene, James is shown moving from emotional imbalance to balance with the same angle. When he falls to his knees in the Lakeview Hotel, telling Pyramid Head he's realized why he needed the town and the monster. The camera shifts from an angle to being even with James, from imbalanced to balance. We can't see James's face, but the camera reinforces the idea James has started to wake up, that his worldview is writing itself. In Eddie's breakdown in the prison, we don't see many facial close-ups. There are a few. What we do get are broken, jumpy camera frames, which are timed with his voice lines. As he talks about being bullied, the camera jumps wildly around the room, centered on him in different angles and locations. He's losing it. He's jumping from thought wildly. He's violent and angry, and the camera mimics his feelings. Even the hospital elevator scene, which I generally consider the weakest, has some powerful work going on in its subtleties. The hospital level focuses on finding two rings, which requires both Maria and James to navigate, before giving the rings to a religious figure and entering a hallway. It's a symbolic marriage, which leads directly to Maria's death, a terrible foreshadowing of Mary and her fate. When Maria dies, there's only one part of her body we can really see, her hand and the rings on her fingers. A subtle, fantastic detail, in a scene in which so much was limited and couldn't be shown. So much emotional work in Silent Hill 2 is done by camera angles and framing, and there are so many powerful little details. When James meets Maria, she hits on him quite boldly, grabs his hand, and has him touch her chest. We can't see much of either of their faces, because we're very far from the scene. A scene that happens to be framed so a singular piece of the fence blocks where James's hand touches Maria. It's a subtle touch you almost miss, but which reminds you every single camera angle was carefully chosen. But carefully chosen doesn't mean each angle wasn't one that was ultimately a step down from what they might have wanted. Every game is a process of learning, and the first two Silent Hill games had the biggest learning curves. Personally, comparing them to 3 and 4 visually, it seems clear the team was still figuring out how to present scenes the way they wanted, and how best to implement the current technology. 2 is the first PS2 Silent Hill game, and I imagine much of the game was a learning experience for the young developers. So now we consider the remake. Here is a PS5 game made 20 years later, reimagining scenes created with the limitations of a much older console. How could they not attempt to show more, to detail more, of scenes that had very still, almost blank faces? The question of quality comes not from how much emotion is shown, but how and when said emotions are shown. The secret to James is he is very emotional. Sometimes. His journey is one from complete dissociation, a mental state in which he is isolated from his own memories, thoughts, and feelings, to reassociation, when he remembers the truth and becomes reconnected with his feelings. Consider Maria's many deaths, or the endings of the game. James is obviously screaming, crying, and mourning in much of the game, yet the part we most remember are the larger portion of the game in which he doesn't remember, and has few emotions. The scenes the trailer for Remake shows are the most powerful moments of the game, Maria's first death, and her third. Of course he's screaming, of course he's showing his feelings, and the way the scenes are framed is beautifully in line with how the original carefully chose to show the scenes. I felt the power of the scene when James fell to his knees, and our viewpoint came from below looking up as James lifted his head. This is his rebirth moment, the moment when he vocally acknowledges the truth and chose to stand and defeat his monster. This is his greatest moment, and we see it start at the literal lowest point. We are below him and he is falling, because Maria has died again. From here, he can only rise. The elevator scene is my favorite. We get to see his face, 
Watching a character die for the first time from behind a head in a locked elevator isn't a great scene. Now we're free to show the scene from the front, possibly even to show more graphic details of Maria's actual death. It might be better to show a hint of the death before switching to James's face. The possibilities for a modern engine are endless. I understand the fear James might be too emotional. The problem is, you cannot evaluate the state of a game by its trailers. Trailers are so carefully handpicked to show highest moments, tensest scenes, the most important breathtaking things to try and earn your interest. When you take away those moments, most of the trailer was James walking, looking around, examining items, with a normal expression. All within line of what I'd expect. I think the one scene that really throws it over for most is the noose scene. The comparison is just so different from complete inhuman stillness to a fully human face from a motion capture actor. I understand the knee-jerk reaction because it's a huge change, but it's not a bad one. That's an actual human face, not a game model frozen with no expression, not because that's how the team wanted him to look, but because that's how the budget and technical limitations demanded he look. When you consider how much of the game was limited in scope because of these things, you look at the changes in the remake very differently. I actually want there to be more changes and additions. For instance, the original team wanted Pyramid Head to chase you throughout the game. He was going to be a Mr. X-style monster, appearing and disappearing, hunting you through the city streets. In early promotional material, he appeared in the apartment levels. The limitations to the game made them cut this feature. This, to me personally, is a major thing that could throw the remake into a modern classic territory, Reintroducing a feature the original game was meant to have, which could drastically improve gameplay and the sense of fear, by giving a beloved monster a chance to really shine as an enemy. Please let Pyramid Head hunt me. While making this video, I went back to Pyramid Head's short introduction in the trailer and considered it at length. First watching the trailer, the scene stuck out to me, but I didn't have long to consider it. I remember thinking, he's walking inside. Why? That struck me, but I was involved in other projects and didn't consider it long at the time. Now I realize why it feels important, and I've come to a possibly important conclusion about what it means. For one, it's lovely we've returned to original Pyramid Head with his dad bod body, his basic helmet, his strange slouchy posture and great knife. He is so integral to the game, and the team clearly followed the original, and likely with Ito Masahiro's influence, kept him as true as possible to Silent Hill 2's spirit. But let's talk about the short scene we see him in. It's raining. He's walking inside from outside. Examining the background and considering the setting, we can easily determine where this is. That's a wire fence, and that's a... I don't know what it is, but I know it shows up on rooftops. That is the top of the hospital, where Pyramid Head appears on the rooftop to push James. It's dark outside, like it is after the transition to the other world that happens in the hospital. But what stands out is Pyramid Head is walking inside. Inside to the hospital, not outside to push James. Not once in the original game do we see Pyramid Head enter or exit a place. He always simply appears and then disappears based on James's movement through the world. In the original cutscene, James is exploring the rooftop, and a scene begins that shows Pyramid Head approaching him from behind. He wasn't there before, he just appears. Why would the game need to show Pyramid Head entering a place, and how does the location, the hospital rooftop, influence the meaning of the scene? We only need to show him entering and exiting if he's moving. This isn't a locked cutscene, this isn't a default scene, this is Pyramid Head entering a place during gameplay. He's walking into the hospital, possibly after having thrown James from the rooftop into the hospital. Is he coming to chase James down? Oh my god, he could be coming inside to chase James down. Everything we've seen in the trailer honestly looks amazing. It looks promising. Yes, there have been a multitude of articles coming out about the game that have fans in a tizzy, but remember, those are games articles, and game articles about unreleased games are almost always total bull. I can't count the number of times when pre-release promotional content was just crap. You can't trust articles. What you can place hopes on is actual game content. And what we have is the scenes from the trailer. 
It's not to say the trailer's a guarantee the game will be brilliant. We don't really seem to have actual gameplay. Most of it is all cutscenes, and it's short. But when you consider the details, it becomes clear the team behind the game did their homework and have done some major work at not just remaking, but reconsidering the game in a positive light, looking at its strengths and weaknesses and attempting to provide something that complements that game. Good remakes are a conversation. They make you reconsider the original source material to look at it in a new light, to introduce it to an audience who may never have heard of it. In a perfect world, we'd have a Silent Hill 2 re-release alongside this, my one big complaint about this whole thing. But we did get Silent Hill 4 on PC, and that gives me a little hope Konami hasn't forgotten the old games. To me, that's why Resident Evil 4 and Final Fantasy VII Remake, both stellar games, are perfect examples of the remake genre. They both develop upon the original game and have something to say about that game specifically, about the game's strengths and weaknesses and how players felt about the game. And the original game is still entirely available in many modern formats so that everyone can play either version and discuss the variations. That's the power of a remake, like the Rebirth ending, bringing an old work of art back to life. And as a primarily Silent Hill YouTuber, I can't tell you how much Silent Hill is alive again. Two years ago, I wasn't sure I could keep being a Silent Hill YouTuber. Silent Hill was not anyone's interest anymore. The keyword searches on YouTube were disappearing. Fan content at conventions was gone. Resident Evil and Devil May Cry were soaring to life, but Silent Hill was not. Now it's like a brand new world. Everyone wants to talk about it. New people have gotten involved in it. And I am so thrilled to be in a world where we can discuss Silent Hill 2 once again. Here's hoping the game releases soon, so we can discuss and compare even more about the original and its successor.